and welcome to the Code With Me video for Chapter 1. Now I assume that you have your textbook by now and we can start walking through this chapter. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to do a little bit of coding to prepare you for your assignment. So this is something that you will turn in. So make sure you're on your computer as you're listening to this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, make sure you have your compiler installed. If you don't already, go back to Learning Module 1 and check that out. So we're going to start with Chapter 1. This is called Creating Java Programs. Now if you're in my face-to-face -face course, we'll do this together so you don't have to. Well, you, you don't have to go through this assignment. We're going to do it together. But if you're in the online course, you want to listen to the complete video so you make sure that you can submit it properly. <clears throat> um, chapter 1, Creating Java Programs. Now what we're doing with this course is we are learning how to properly design a program um, and we're going to learn Java while we do it. So in the beginning of the chapter it talks about your basic program structure. Now what I'm going to do in this video before we get to coding is walk through page by page of this chapter. So open your textbook and I'm looking at page 3. Read through these concepts. Um, the major concepts that are talked about here are syntax. Um, I'm thinking whether or not I should make a note chart. Um, the major um, the major concepts here in chapter one that you'll want to pay attention to, and also there's a PowerPoint you can read and the quizzes and as you go through the assignments it'll help you but I'll just I'll just make a, a chart and then add it to Blackboard. <clears throat> um, syntax errors. Now with syntax errors we have two types. Um, we have logic errors and then we have, um, we have computer syntax errors. I spelled the... Okay, logic errors are where you design the program wrong, and it doesn't do what you think it should do, but it does what you tell it to do. So these are problems that are fixed by you, the programmer. And then your computer, your syntax errors, your technical errors, these are things that are wrong with the code. And you'll have both logic errors and um, syntax errors, or computer syntax errors. You'll create both of those, especially in the beginning. You might not know how to logically design your program, and that's what we're teaching you in this course, how to think about it so it's most efficient. Um, the compiler that you use, and in this course we're using JGRASS, the compiler will tell you what your syntax errors are. So when we run it and compile it, and I'll show you as we go through this lab or this video, it will say something like you're missing a syntax error or you spelled this thing wrong, but sometimes it's not so clear and it's um, frustrating, especially in the beginning. But stick with it and you'll figure it out. Um, those are some of the major um, programming terminologies. Now, it also explains different levels of programming. Java is a high-level um, programming language, so your major programming languages um, that you'll learn nowadays, Java, C++, C Sharp, which is with the pound sign, Visual Basic .NET, and um, there's a whole uh, bunch of different scripting languages for um, websites and so on, but those are the, the, the major ones. Now, on page to page 3 of the textbook, it shows you something called the flowchart. Now when we're designing a program, I can type, we use two concepts and I'll, I'll work with these as we do our assignments and in the chapter. So we have flowcharts and we have pseudocode. Flowcharts is a visual um, depiction of how your program should run. And um, your pseudocode is English or your native language um, words 
that aren't code specific, but words that tell us how our program runs or how it should run. So th they're both very similar. And as a programmer, when you start coding a program, you should, <clears throat> you excuse me, as a programmer, you should decide which method do you want to use. Do you want to use flowcharts or pseudocode? And um, say I want to I want to write a program that um, takes in my name and prints it to the screen. So I would do if I were doing pseudocode, I would do something like read um, read user name, enter user name. Well, that would be the same. Um, read user name. I'll enter into variable whatever it is. I'll use camel casing. We'll talk about this later when we get into variables. Um, and display user name to this. Oh, I hate word. How it fixes that. Ah, oh, well. Display user name to the screen. So this would be a very simple um, program, obviously, that just does input and then output. Now, if I was doing a flowchart, I would use symbols. Um, Word is not the best tool to do a flowchart, but I'll just um, give you a quick example. So I would do um, a start, and in the textbook on page three, it shows your flowchart. So I would, uh, let's see, oh. can I add text in there? Add text start and then I would have an arrow I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because there's a lot of examples in the book but then you'd have an arrow that goes from this symbol to the next symbol and the next symbol would be um, an input box so shapes piece of parallelogram So you, you kind of get the idea. That's all I'll draw um, right now. So this would be a flow chart. So you'd go from this step to this step. And what it would do is if you have loops or decisions, it would take you off in different directions. So those are the major concepts of um, designing a program. Um, on page five, let me see if I can get down here. Dang. Hey, word sometimes. Not the best tool. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll share this um, document as you're watching the video if you want to keep notes. On page five, it talks about the differences um, between procedural coding, which are old languages. So if you're um, new in the field or younger, then these are things that we won't code with. But if your um, parent or maybe even your grandparent was a programmer in their time, they did procedural codes. So languages like C and um, um, COBOL, the older languages, those were procedural programs. But all the newer languages are object-oriented or OO programming concepts. And it works with, OO languages work with classes and objects and inheritance. Um, it allows us to better use GUIs, graphical user interface. Um, GUIs, um, encapsulation which is how we protect data. Um, read, through chap uh, read through the chapter five through polymorphism, five through nine, and um, understand object-oriented programming. The quiz will quiz you on that as well. Now, um, all of your newer languages are object-oriented. So uh, C++, C Sharp, Java, Visual Basic .NET, not your old, old VB6 was procedural. Um, <clears throat> but Java, by default, is object-oriented. So everything, this is important, everything in Java is in a class. And when we start coding, when I open JGraph, you'll see that. Um, page 10, it talks about the features of the Java programming language. Um, we will learn this as we go on. But um, it's important that there's a lot of 
to understand this statement. So on like page 13, it talks about the, the basic structure of a command. <coughs> Excuse me. First week, I'm always, always sick. Uh, The, there's a lot of built-in parts of um, any programming language, and it's case sensitive. So if you look at page 13 where it says system.out.println, this is how we print something to the screen. And system.out.println, that's a piece of, um, it, it's a function or a, um, it's a function or a method that exists within the language, and we use it to print something to the screen. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that are already part of the language that we just use. Um, identifiers on page 15, these are keywords. And as we go through the book and the learning this class, we will use, um, we will use these keywords, every single one of them. Um, camel casing, this is something that I use where we do, uh, when we create a variable. Um, this is what I was trying to do earlier. This is on page 15. Um, camel casing, when we create a variable, it would be like double, which we'd give it a data type, and quit fixing it word. It'd be lowercase. And then I would do uh, my income, where the first word is lowercase and the second word is uppercase. And um, that'd be how you declare a variable. Just one example. I think chapter two goes into declaring variables, but that's the, that's camel casing where you combine two words and um, you combine two words in one with no spaces. Blah, what am I talking about? Um, that's a very common programming concept, and um, that gives you some examples on page sixteen. But I do use camel casing with all of my um, code. Um, Let's get to coding so we can do something. But um, page 17 talks about indentation, white space, and the main method on page 18. Every programming language has name. So um, those are the things we talked about so far. I may add that in Blackboard or may not. But let's go ahead and open up JGrasp. Now this is um, whatever system you're using. You have already have it installed, and it's a very simple um, Compiler. It, it works very simple. So we're going to create, I have a program already um, created, but we're going to create a new Java program. So I'm going to follow along on page 21. This is our first application. Ignore what's on my screen. I'm going to close it right now. Now JGrasp has this, I don't, I have, this is the first semester I've used this compiler, but it's pretty simple. Um, the compiler we've used in the past that I also like is Eclipse. You may choose to use that if you want. Um, this one, this one um, is very easy to set up projects. That's why we're, um, that is why we are using it. So we're going to create a new Java. So file new Java, and you notice it just starts creating one. Now let me go ahead and hit save so I can save my Java file. And um, I think we can just leave this on the default setter up. And I'm going to create, I'm going to create, uh, this is your code with me to um, code with me assignment. So we'll call it code with me um, CWM2, and um, you can maybe do assignment. I don't put spaces in my file names, and I wouldn't recommend that you do either. So we're using DOS format, it looks like. And what it'll do is automatically apply the .java extension. So just name it. This is code with me assignment, code with me to assignment, and then hit save. So now we have. Here we are. These are other things that I've done. I have classes and um, a sample. So we start off with this blank text editor. And um, everything in Java is in a class. So as you've read through the chapter, you know that we have to create a class. So before we do that, we're going to start with something called internal documentation. I want you to type along with me in your, in your environment, because you're going to turn this in for points. Um, let me see if I can make my, I'll make, I'll see if I make my um, font a little bit bigger for you to follow along. Let's see. Oh. 
Well, that's really big, but we'll leave it really big. So you can see, um, make sure you don't make any errors. <laughs> My screen's really big now. Okay, internal documentation, I'm pretty sure, is a concept that's explained in this chapter. I'll just thumb through real quick. <clears throat> yes, it's comments. It's um, on page 31. Make sure you read about that. Um, I do great on documentation, and I don't want every line documented, just the big chunks. So we would use this to do things like, uh, who's the author? Yourself. So put your name here. And what is this assignment? These are things that are not um, compiled, so you can type in whatever you want. Code with me to, or code with me to is what we called it for learning module two. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, we can add our date to right now it's August 31st, the last day of August in 2014. Now I'll probably use these videos for winter, so it's probably somewhere in January, and hopefully you don't have a college semester going on right now. Just throwing it out there for winter 2015. Right now, it's a beautiful summer sunny day. Okay, we're going to start our program, and we're going to always start the same way. Where we create, uh, it, it's not in cap, so I have my cap thing out. We're going to create a class. Um, that did not spell create. Create a class. And um, it's always with the keyword public, and then the word class, and then you can call it whatever you want. In this example, on page 21, we're going to create a class called Hello. And then we open our class with a curly brace, and we close our class with a curly brace. Now, what I do as a programmer is I always document end of class. And I document because I've actually cried over missing curly braces and missing semicolons. Yes, real tears of just anger, because it's so frustrating sometimes when you cannot figure out your syntax errors, and your program won't run. Now. When I open something, I always close it right away. So that is my programming advice to you. Close it when you open it so you don't cry in the future. Now, maybe you're not as sensitive as I am, um, or maybe this will come like second nature to you, but uh, programming takes some work, and it can be it can be a challenge at the beginning, especially with... Oh, this is something good to know. Um, it can be a challenge, especially with the syntax errors. Okay, I went ahead and hit save. Now, I did not think this would be the case with um, JGRASS, but it is. My class name must be the same as my file name. So I called this code with me assignment 2, so I need to call my class that. Now, if I hit save, it says home file name does not match expected name. It must match the top level class or it will not compile. So we don't want to hit save anyway. We want to fix that. So instead of calling it hello, I could either change the name of my file, but I'm not going to. I'm going to call it code with me to assignment. Okay, so this, this is how I use documentation to explain things. This must match file name or you can't save it. Now I hit save and look, it works perfectly. You can't save it and you can't compile it. Now just while you're doing that, I'm going to, this is just a little bit too big for me. So I'm going to tone it down a little bit so we can see more of the screen. I think that went to my... Now I can't find um, font. <laughs> right. Oh, cold medicine kicking. There, let's do 1.5. We'll, we'll, that, that's a little bit bigger. Okay. Now we, <clears throat> excuse me, now we can see our entire code. So, we're still on page 21. 
we have the start of our class. Now, also um, in there is we always need, always, always need a main. And our main is going to be set up the same way. Public, static, void, main, string, da, da, and arguments if we accept them. Open, close, and again, I document, end of main. <clears throat> now, if you're using a different compiler, which is one of the things I don't care for in JGOS, is it um, different compilers will, when you open something up, it'll close it for you, but this one doesn't, so you have to make sure you end it. Now, we're going to do a simple, this is your first hello world statement. We're going to use a simple system that out at printer line. So I'm going to go on to the next page on page 22. All of our code in the beginning until we make our own classes, all code goes here. This is all my code so far. And I want to use a system.out.println. Now this is um, case sensitive, so you'll notice I need to capitalize my S. And then in the qu quotation marks, I want to say something. Hi, my name <coughs> is Katie. Why don't you add another statement, system.out.println, that says what your degree is. My degree is in higher education leadership. Or your degree is in programming, or your degree is in arts, whatever your degree is in. Uh, write that, so I know a little bit about you when I grade this. And that's our code. Now, oh, why my face? I'm going to save my code, uh, and then we're going to compile it to see if we have any syntax errors. Now, our program follows this major um, in programming. Let me go back to this file. In programming, we have three major structures. We have sequence. We have decisions and we have loops. What we'll end up doing is using all of those. What our program is doing right now is using sequence. It does this, this, and ends. One, two, out the door. Now, as we get into the other chapters, we'll go off in many different directions. So, um, right now, this is all that your program is going to do. And when it hits this line, it's over. You know, this curly brace, it's over. I'm going to look through this compiler real quick, and you can um, follow along with me. Make sure you save. I'm going to try to format. And again, this compiler is new to me, so we'll we'll learn together. Um, and what I want to do is just format it so that it um, is indented because it helps us um, look at. Well, I don't know what this is. Nope. It helps us look at the code a little bit easier to match up um, curly braces and so on. I don't know why I say and so on, but I just end my sentences that way. Did you notice? You probably will now. Um, <clears throat> there's got to be a way, and you're probably searching right now with me, and I'm going to pause in a minute so I can just Google it, but let's, I want to find a way where we can um, indent these. Oh, we could show line numbers. This might be helpful. There we go. That's helpful, too. What is CSD? Oh. If you figured it out how to do auto indent, you're probably yelling at the video. Just go here. Just go there. Let me pause for a minute and do a quick Google search. Okay, I figured it out. Um, what you want to do is control A, I'm just going to select all my code, and then go to uh, generate CSD, and I don't know what CSD stands for. Generate CSD, and whatever that means. This is how helpful Google is. It just tells you how to do it. Um, 
and it will auto tab things for us and you notice this really helps keep track of our code and I would guess that if we just click this button here auto generate CSD it will always be on so as oh as your um, what did I do as you're typing and coding you can it'll automatically do it in the future so that will help us to um, do our indentations okay now the next step so what we've done <clears throat> what we've done so far steps in programming we've um, designed our program N not very hard but we designed it um, so now we need to compile it we need to fix any syntax errors any things like missing semicolons and then we need to <clears throat> and then we need to run it so run the exe which we'll do right from the environment and then fix any logic errors so the basic concepts We'll cover this more in depth later as we get into harder programs. So let's go back to JGrasp. Uh, we're going to compile it. So we're going to go to Build and Compile. Now what it's showing down here is our, it created our class, so that's fine. And what it shows down here in this compile message is any of our syntax errors. I have no syntax errors. Now I'm going to create one. I'm going, to, it's, I'm going to take away this semicolon right here. And then I'm going to compile. I'm going to compile again. And you'll see this, um, a syntax error. I cannot go on until I fix this error. If I click on this, if I click on my error, and I compile it right here, it'll tell me, error, in this line, it's expected a semicolon right here. See, right here. So I go right there and I put a semicolon and then I compile again. Now some compilers and sometimes your error is not that um, clear. So like, I'll, let me take away my quotation mark. Compile again and let's see how, if this tells us we're missing a quotation mark. Um, <clears throat> actually it has two errors. Undis unclosed string literal. Okay, here's the line unclosed string literal look up string literal it's a series it's a sentence a series of words and you'll see I don't close it I don't end it but without with that one it caused this error as well so fix one and compile again and then all of our errors are gone now what we want to do our errors are gone so we're ready to run it I'm going to clear that whoops that's copy clear my output window Make this a little smaller again, and I'm going to run my program. Um, run as an application, and you'll see it switches over to the run input output window. We are using, we are doing um, a screen. We're just not. We're not doing GUI applications at this point. This chapter or this book does show graphical user interfaces, but we're just doing console um, programs. That's the word. And um, here's my output. Hi, my name is Katie. My degree is in higher ed leadership. So once my program's running and I want to do something with it, I run it as an application. And it shows what's going on there. Let's see what, um, we're not running it as a, I don't know what Canvas is. I don't know what that is. We're not gonna use that right now. <laughs> Let's just go back and run as an application and run in campus. I should not have done that. I have to look that up. Run as an application. I can run it again. So there we go. That is our first program in Java. And using, uh, I'm going to go back to my, I don't, oh, pardon me. I Like I said, this is a new For Pete's sake. There we go, guys. This is a new compiler for me. 
So that's our first program. Now let me just take a quick look through the book to see if we can end our um, code with me and I'll show you how to submit it. Uh, anything else important in here? There's also like, um, there's a you do it on page 25, which creates a syntax error, which I've already done, so I think you'll be fine. Oh, and then on page 28, see what help if I read the chapter, huh? But it talks about uh, the different types of applications. Comments, make sure you add comments, and you don't need, you need your name and the date, um, and then just basic comments like this. You don't need to comment every single line. Um, there's two ways to add comments. Look at page 33 in the box, two truths and a lie. Oh, that sounds damning. But um, read that because it tells you how, the different ways to document, and we will use these throughout. <clears throat> Adding comments to a class on page 34. Do, do, do. I think that is the, the basics. We're not going to touch GUIs yet, but I think that is the basics of this chapter. And that completes the code with me. But what I need to show you is how to submit it and what I want you to submit. So save this. Close this. When you go to Blackboard, that's my tips and tricks, I'll make an assignment um, for this right now with the Code With Me assignment. When you go into Learning Module 2, um, which is under, wait, under construction still, <laughs> I'll have an assignment. And what you need to submit is your .java file, the .java file. I'll put that in bold, but what you need to do is find where you save your files. So um, where did I save my JGrasp files? That's a very good question. Let me open it back up and see where I saved my files. You might have to do this too if you didn't pay attention to where you put it, like me. Aren't you glad that I am just like you? Say, let me do a save as to see where it's going. Oh, it's going into my CO116 programs fall 2014. Okay. Close it back up. Um, CO116 fall. Ooh, there's my solutions. What did I just save it as? Program files? Not that one. Right here. Your desktop might be messier than mine, or it might be cleaner than mine. Here's my 132 fall 2014 files. Nope, that's not the, the 132. What am I talking about? I thought I just saw it. Oh, goodness gracious. If you guys deal with me all semester, bless your hearts. <laughs> Where did I save it? Let me do this again. Save as CO116 program. Oh, why don't I look at the past? Documents. Okay. I'm just like you, and I'm singing a song, and I'm figuring out how to use Windows 8 at the same time. All right. Documents. 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 I thought it was just in here. Oh, right here. Hey, let's move this out to my desktop. CO116 programs, these are my code programs. These are what I've created. What you turn in is this file right here. This right here. This is the code I need to see. Now, um, in your assignment, I also would, I'll, I'll, in our next programs, I'll show you how to include your documentation at the end. Actually, I know you want me to quit talking, but let's um, open up our program real quick one more time because I want to show you one more thing that I want you to do and submit with your program. <laughs> now I have to search because I changed my location. Katie, desktop, programs. Okay, here's my file. Ba -ba -da. Okay, one of the things I want you to do at the end of your class, I want you to document your output from the run I.O. screen. So we're going to use um, 
this method of documentation where we use a slash and a curly, um, an asterisk and then an asterisk and a slash. And you can put multiple lines between here and it'll all be commented out. So I'm going to run my program. Run as an application. No, I'm going to run my program. Um, I need to compile it. Okay, it'll compile and run it. And then what I want you to do is copy this output. So here's my program running. So I'm going to highlight it, do control C, and I'm going to paste it right here. And what this shows me when I grade is that your program, that your program works. So here's your code. I cannot always tell that your program is going to work without seeing the output. So add your output to your .java file. And um, save files and continue. I'm saving my file. I'm going back to my folder. Let me just update this um, function as well. 541, OK. And um, this is what I would turn in. I'm just going to open it. I'm going to open it with Notepad just so I can see what I'm turning in. This is what I want to see from you for your code with me. So when you go into Blackboard, you'll upload that file. Um, I'll make a video and I'll put it um, right here and it'll show you how to do that as well. So thanks for putting up with me with Chapter 1 lecture. I hope you had fun coding your first programs. I look forward to Chapter 2. It's called Using Data and we get to do input and output. Much more fun. Um, have a great week, and I'll talk with you soon.